Hey folks, today we're going to talk specifically about single replacement reactions and actually predicting what products are going to be with single replacement reactions. Again, let's think about this dance thing. We did this in our last podcast. The concept of a single replacement reaction is someone else comes in and replaces this guy. And he goes off on his own. And these two bond together. Right? Remember, that's what we talked about with single replacement reaction. So what happens chemically? If we drop a penny in hydrochloric acid, will anything happen? That's the question that we have. How do we know if something will happen? Well, it all has to do with something called an activity series. So look at these folks. You've got some folks on the left. You've got some folks on the right. Who's healthier? Who's more attractive? Who's more active? Clearly, the guy on the right-hand side who's out there running is much more active and much more attractive than the guys on the left. Okay, So if you have to make a decision as to whether you're going to be with the one on the right or the one on the left, you're going to choose, clearly, or at least I hope you will, this guy over here. So let's look at an example. If I take iron and I combine it with copper sulfate, iron's a solid, and I throw it in a solution of copper sulfate, the question is, will the iron replace the copper? and produce iron sulfate and a copper metal? Or would the reverse be true? If I took a solution of iron sulfate and dropped a piece of copper in it, would we produce iron and copper sulfate? Well, guys, the bottom line is only one can happen. It can't do both. So the deal is the sulfate, the sulfate ion, that's the negative thing over here. Remember that iron and copper are both positive. The sulfate is negative, so the SO4 is the negative thing. Would it rather be with the iron, or would it be, rather be with the copper? Well, what we have to do is we have to look at an activity series. Now, if you folks remember, uh, back on the first few pages of your packet, there was something called an activity series. So if you pause the video, please, find that, because you're going to need it throughout this video and to do your worksheet. Okay, so go ahead and get that, and then come back. All right. Your activity series is all about which of the metals are most attractive to a negative anion, which cation is most attractive. Now, this is not a complete exhaustive list. In fact, your list has more on it than I fit here. But, um, for example, let's look at lithium. Lithium is very, very, very active. It is the most, metal in, most active in um, the activity series. So it is going to push anything else away. It is going to go say, I want to bond with whatever the anion is, and the other thing, the other cation, whatever it is, will be left all by itself. Right? Whereas gold is the least active, which makes a lot of sense because that's why certain things are made out of gold, like crowns for cover people's teeth are made out of gold, and that's because it won't react. So whatever you eat, it's not going to react with it, and that's important. All right. So which actually does happen? Um, we have to look at the activity series for iron and for copper. Sorry, I went the wrong way. So let's look at iron. Let's look at iron. Iron is down here. Now, you'll notice I put a charge with it. These charges that we have here, those are just the most common ions. There are other ions that can happen. Oh, iron is iron. So we're just doing the most common charge. And I'm sorry, we said iron and copper. So let's look at iron and copper. Well, iron is far higher on the activity series than copper is. Copper is very is, is close to the least active, and iron is much closer to the most active. So iron is the one that we would like to be with. So the sulfate ion is going to choose, and it would rather be with... Well, we just said it would rather be with iron. So the sulfate ion is wants to be with iron. So uh, this is what would happen. And it would leave copper all alone. See, here's the deal. If iron is already with sulfate, copper can't replace it. Because sulfate would rather be with iron. Right? Let's go back to the dance example we used a few minutes ago. Right? If you happen to be at a dance, and the guy you're with is really, really, really cute, then you're not going to drop him for some other guy. right? But if the guy you're with isn't very cute or isn't very uh, friendly or whatever, then maybe you will drop him for another guy. 
if the right guy comes along. But you have to find someone who is more attractive to you. And in our case, that simply means they're higher on the activity series. Right? So since iron is more active than copper, then sulfate is going to be with iron, and this happens. So does this happen? No, it definitely does not. So nothing happens right there. That does not happen. OK, so let's look at this one. Uh, lithium and potassium. Well, I've written down that lithium is more reactive than potassium. Let's see what we find. Oh, gosh, lithium is the most active thing. Potassium's right below it, but lithium is, in fact, the most active. So if lithium is hanging out here, then uh, we're definitely going to go with lithium instead of something else. So chlorine is going to drop potassium, and it's going to get together with lithium. So this reaction up here happens, and this reaction down here does not. All right, let's look at this one, calcium and magnesium. This says calcium is more reactive than magnesium. So I'm not even going to look. I'm going to assume that's right. So chlorine would rather be with calcium than it would be with magnesium. Well, it's currently with magnesium. So it's going to go and it's going to get together with calcium. So this reaction up here happens. Down here, this reaction, chlorine's already with calcium. So you throw some magnesium in there and chlorine says, I don't want magnesium. I'm happier with calcium. I'm going to stay with what I have. So no reaction happens here. You can throw magnesium in there all you want, and the calcium chloride is going to stay together. All right. Let's try another one. All right. This time you try it. Pull out your activity series, see what you think. All right. Well, lithium is the most active element on the chart. So when I look at lithium, here's lithium. It's the most active. So it is going to replace the iron. So the iron will be all by itself. So that means it will be a solid. And the lithium is going to bond with chlorine. Now one of the cool things here is you'll notice these compounds. This compound is aqueous. This one, lithium, is solid. And lithium chloride is going to be aqueous. Now, of course, when you're doing this, you're going to have to go and balance it. So you'll come up with something like this. All right, how about the next one? The next one says potassium, phosphate, and calcium. Does this reaction happen? So pause the video, see what you think, and then come back. Well, we have potassium and we have calcium, so we look on our activity series. Oh, we see the potassium is higher than calcium, so the anion would rather be with potassium. So, Oh, it's already with potassium. So throwing calcium in there doesn't matter. So no reaction takes place here. And that's what you would write. You'd write no reaction or NR, something to indicate that nothing happens in this reaction. All right, how about this one? We take some calcium and we throw it in with some phosphoric acid. So pause the video and see what you think. All right. So we have to look up calcium, and we have to look up the cation, and in our case, the cation is the hydrogen. So I'm comparing calcium to hydrogen. When I look, I find that hydrogen is way down here. Calcium is much more reactive than, uh, much more active than hydrogen. So it would much rather be with calcium. So the phosphate is going to drop the hydrogen, and it's going to get together with the calcium. So I'm going to get calcium, phosphate, and that means I need three calciums and two phosphates. And the thing that's going to be all by itself is hydrogen. And realize, guys, I have not balanced. So you can do that to balance, and you should be good. Right? And, of course, if you're putting uh, what type, all right, I can't type, I can't write and speak at the same time. What these things are, you've got uh, phosphoric acid, which is aqueous, calcium, which is solid, calcium phosphate, which is going to be aqueous, and I think it's aqueous. Maybe it's a solid. I have to look it up. And then hydrogen gas. We'll talk about that later. All right. 
Look at lithium, bromide, and iron. Pause the video, see what you think. All right, well, this one's real easy. Lithium bromide. Look where lithium is. Lithium is the most active thing. So bromine is already with lithium, so no reaction happens here because bromine is all, already as content as it can possibly get. All right, guys, you've got a worksheet to do. Go ahead and do it. You'll notice one of the things on the worksheet is often we use names instead of symbols. That's something you have to practice. Remember, all of your, uh, your test is going to be all in names. I'm not giving you symbols. It's going to be all names. You just have to be prepared for that. Okay, so make sure you know your names. All right, have a good one. See you in class. If you have questions, let us know.